Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. Hi there, folks. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'm pleased that you joined us this morning on Doc Talk. We're going to be talking about transporting cattle, everything from loading and unloading to things that could happen during the transport period. Should be a great show, and I'm glad that you joined us. My name's Tim Todd, uh, along with my wife Chris. We own and operate Green Mountain Angus Ranch out of Raggy, Montana. We give our cows a shot of multi-min pre-calving for the immune system of the unborn calf. She will transfer the minerals into the unborn calf through the blood system. When the calf is born, he has a, a high level of mineral in his liver, which will help with his immune system. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University, and today I don't have a guest, but we'll be talking about something that's a passion of mine and something that occurs on a day-to-day -day basis here in the beef industry, and that's transporting our, our cattle. And, and the first thing that when we start to talk about transporting cattle is to pick out the ones that are fit for transport. And, and more of, a, of an issue is making sure that we don't ship the wrong ones than it is making sure that we ship the right ones. So some of the things that, that I have a list here that, that we'll go through today and we'll have some illustrations of how these, these occur or, or things. But the first thing is, is we want to make sure that we don't ship a, a sick, injured, or, or weak or fatigued animal. So we're going to look at the cattle. Basically, if they're sick or injured, these animals that, that don't look fit or don't look like they could complete the ride, these are animals we want to make sure that we don't put on the, the trailer to ship to town or ship to sale barn or ship anywhere for, for that. The next one is, is one that's kind of a no-brainer, but, but it bears reminding is, is non-ambulatory cattle. And, and again, shipping non-ambulatory cattle is is not only uh, something that's that's an issue that we want to make sure we don't put those animals on the truck, but can be a liability issue and, and, a, and a, a, an issue with the law. Non-ambulatory cattle, when they're moved, they cannot be drugged. They cannot be lifted with chains. These animals have to be moved with a sled or, or the bucket of a loader. So these types of animals definitely cannot be transported and, and any animal that looks like it may go down during transport shouldn't be put on there. Animals that are blind when they have pink eye or, or cattle that have problems seeing, these animals need special accommodations. We definitely don't want to be putting them on a load with cattle that can see because they don't know their way around. So special accommodations for those types of animals. And then we get into the kind of the pregnancy, newborn calf type status. And, and so newborn calves within the first 48 hours, cows that are, that are projected to calve or, or in the last 10% time of their gestation period. These animals shouldn't be placed on a truck because the stress could trigger partrition. The animal could go into to calving on the truck and we don't want that to, to happen. Another one that we want to make sure of is that females that have just given birth or that are fatigued, these animals can go into a stress type situation, they can go into tremors, and they can go down, down on the truck. And then two other classes of animals, Definitely don't want to ship any animal that's prolapsed or uterus. These are extremely heavy, and during transport, these can, can depart from the body, and when they do, the animals then hemorrhage. So don't ship those, those uterine prolapses in, in the truck. And then the last one is just general animals in general, poor animal welfare condition. And the best way to judge that is through body condition score, whether it's a beef cow or a dairy cow. We want to make sure that we aren't shipping those animals that are too thin, uh, and too fatigued. When we come back from the break, we're going to continue our discussion and we're going to move to the loadout and unloading area. If you're watching Doc Talk, we're glad that you joined us and we'll be back in a minute. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. 
and by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. Beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300 LA from Norbrook, specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle. Noramycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Getting ready to work cattle for pre-breeding and calf vaccinations? There's no better time to use a safe, modified live virus vaccine to prevent BRD. Titanium provides the correct equation for BRD with its excellent safety profile and a strong response and long duration of immunity. Ask your veterinarian about modified live virus vaccines and the eight convenient combinations of titanium for the perfect pairing of performance and value. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normycin LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Porum, the practical choice for your herd. Hey there folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University and I'm glad that you joined us today and I don't have a guest as I usually do and today I'm going to cover a topic on my own. We're talking about transporting cattle and it's something that's a very important topic in our country. It's important globally because cattle are transported numerous places day to day whether we're shipping them from the ranch to the feedlot or ranch to the auction market to the feedlot or from the feedlot to the, to the slaughter facility, animals are transported short, medium, and long distances multiple times during their life in the, in, during all segments of our industry. And, and they say that 50% of the stress at transport occurs at the time of loading. So whatever we can do to reduce that stress at the time of loading or unloading is, is vitally important to the stress level of the calf throughout the entire transport process. So the first thing that I look at is, is, is a combination to get to low stress cattle handling. And, and there's two things that are, that are major uh, stepping stones or things that I look at. And, and the first one is, is facilities. And do we have proper facilities for, for the movement of cattle, whether it's the lead up alley, whether it's the, the crowding tub or the bud box, and then the loading chute. All these things need to be inspected. And if you go to the Beef Quality Assurance and they have a transportation beef quality assurance uh, at www.bqa.com, you can see different things for inspection of facilities. But the first thing I'll do with the inspection of a facility is I'll just walk backwards through it. I'll jump up in the loading chute and I'm gonna walk down that loading chute and I'm gonna inspect that loading chute for holes or cracks or crevices. I'm also going to make sure that we have proper footing as we're coming down. Sometimes if we have a wooden facility, boards get broken. Uh, if we have a metal facility, we can get pieces of metal that have rusted and make sure that we don't have places that are protruding to make sure that we don't have animals that are injuring their hooves or stepping through the facility and degloving coming out or slipping and falling. All these things are, are uh, something we need to understand. The next one is the, the landing area, the area where the cattle first come out and making sure that we have that area cleaned out, we don't have manure buildup, that we have the, the manure moved out so it's not slick. I'll then look at, are we using a bud box facility or a, a Temple Grandin type tub facility? Both facilities work fine. We just need to make sure that these facilities have working gates and that they're properly set up. And then lastly, I'll look at the, the lead up alley. 
one of the things when you back up to the to the loadout chute, and if you're going to move a lot of cattle through a loadout chute, is we'll put flexible doors that can move to where the person that's backing up backs up the trailer. One of the things that I see as a problem is when people back up to a loadout chute and we don't back up square. Not only does it cause cattle to balk when they get to the top of the chute or when we're unloading, but cattle can catch their shoulders on there and cause injury and lameness. So inspection of facilities, making sure we have the ability to back up square to the facility are all things that we, what we want to do. When we come back from the break, we're going to move on to the trailer. We're going to do some trailer inspection and talk about that. You're watching Doc Talk. We're really glad that you joined us. This tip brought to you by Batrol 100 Enrofoxacin Injectable, now approved for use in controlling BRD in high-risk cattle. Batrol 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high-risk cattle or treating BRD. Hi folks, it's Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Thanks for joining me for today's On the Farm Tip. We're going to talk about extra label drug usage. Labeled drug usage is when I pick up the bottle, there's a label on it. And when I look at the label, it's going to tell me how much to give, how often, and the route of administration. Route of administration might be sub-Q, IM, or, or intravenous. Now, anytime you change the route of administration, or if you change the dosage, or you change the time in which you give those drugs, that's called extra label drug usage. We can't do that without the written consent of a veterinarian. So we need to follow label directions. If we don't follow label directions, we can wind up with antibiotic residues in the meat. And so when we do an extra label drug usage, we need the veterinarian involved. Thanks for watching today's On the Farm Tip. I'm Dr. Dan, and I'll see you down the road. With BRD, every second counts. And when you get new high-risk cattle, you've got a choice to make. You can either take your chances and wait and see what happens, or you can take charge of BRD. Right from the start, treat bacteria up front with Batril 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved by the FDA for BRD metaphylaxis and high-risk cattle. Ask your veterinarian about Batril 100 and make it your go-to drug to control BRD and high-risk cattle or for treatment of BRD. Batril 100, right the first time. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. In the last three years, we've changed some things in our AI protocol, one of which was the use of multi-min. We've seen a significant increase in our AI pregnancy rate. The cost of an embryo program is significant, and we feel that if we were able to even get one more pregnancy out of, out of a cow, uh, that would pay for the whole cost of the whole bottle of multi-min right there. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas, or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. They have a truck that'll suit your needs. Whether you're looking for power with a Power Stroke diesel, or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. This segment is brought to you by Fink Beef Genetics. Our 23rd annual bull sale featuring 400 Angus and Charlay bulls is Wednesday, October 30th. Contact us at 785-293-5106 for more information and to be added to our mailing list. Hi there, folks, and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. And I'm flying this thing solo today as it would be different than what you tune in most of the time and see me with the guest. And it's not that uh, I think that nobody else can handle this subject. It's just that uh, it's one of those that, that I am directly involved with and, and one of those that, that lends itself to spending a little time with you all today and, and, and talking about this. But we're talking about transporting cattle. And, and when we talk about transportation of cattle, I think everybody understands how cattle are shipped not only around the country but now globally um, when we have cattle that are being shipped, uh, live animal exports, um, and also cattle across state lines within the United States. And not only is it important that these animals be shipped safely, um, 
but it's, it's, it's important that we do it to improve health as well. So when a lot of cattle though are shipped uh, locally, and I can remember working with my dad and grandfather's uh, veterinary clinic and, and going back to the early 70s and, and thinking about the way that we have changed the, in transportation of cattle locally, I can still remember when we would just place the stock racks on the pickup and put a, put a, a 2,000 pound bull in there and drive him to the clinic and you took off the wooden uh, back and ran down, beat him down the loading chute uh, to unload bulls. And so when you'd see uh, Lee Routh or people from back home driving down the road and their truck is shaking and moving like that and they'd have a bull or a cow or something in there and now we have these long goosenecks and we have these three quarter ton pickups can pull about anything. So we really changed and progressed in the equipment that we have to, to, to move cattle with. But when we inspect a trailer, the number one thing we wanna, first thing you wanna inspect is you wanna get up in the trailer and you want to look at the flooring. And we want to make sure that we have the entire floor covered, no holes where the animal could pr have a protruding limb. And then the other one is, is look at boards or, or if it's metal, we'll look for rust. If, but if it's a wooden floor with planks and something in there, we want to make sure that all the boards are, are square, that they're tight, and that we don't have loose boards or the possibility for a problem there. Another thing that's important, of course, when we're moving is that we have doors that function properly. And sometimes this is for animal safety, but a lot of time this is for human safety as well. And making sure that you're back away from those doors when you shut these doors and, and having the proper loading facility will really improve uh, human safety when loading and it improves cattle safety when, when transporting. Kick the tires, make sure we got tire pressure, got good tires on these trailers. Axles and bearings, all these need to be, be uh, checked. And then we want to make sure that we're going to have proper ventilation. Ventilation during shipping is what helps prevent shipping stress. So we want to have a properly ventilated trailer so that we make sure that we don't have these animals in a, in a system that, the, the, that they don't have good ventilation and prevent respiratory disease. And the last one is footing. Whether you have footing in that trailer that is the, the rubber footing, whether you have metal footing, uh, make sure that you have proper footing in the trailer and footing that won't injure the cattle. Uh, sometimes best intentions have unintended consequences. But checking footing, when we come back, we're gonna talk about how to load those animals on the trailer and we're gonna wrap up the show. Thanks for watching. This segment is brought to you by Purple Wave Auction, the easiest, most straightforward way to sell used equipment. Purple Wave, straight, simple, sold. From Kansas State University, this is Agriculture Today. As the name suggests, drought-tolerant corn hybrids are designed to yield well in extra dry weather. But how do they do when ample moisture is available? K-State agronomist Randall Nelson and colleagues tested that out in recent field trials. Here's what they discovered. Under the, the lowest water regime, so the 50% ET, the drought tolerant hybrids did out yield standard hybrids by close to 30 bushels. At the full irrigation level, there was no significant yield drag. I think we can safely say that in a, in a full water situation, you're safe planting a drought tolerant number and, and you won't you won't lose any yield. This is K-State Research and Extension. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. 
Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy-efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hi there folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University where I'm a professor and I'm the Jones Professor of Production Medicine and, and, and Epidemiology and we're talking about transporting cattle and it's a topic that's important to me, it's important to a lot of people and it's especially important to the cattle that we're moving uh, across this country locally from farm to farm, from pasture to pasture and understanding things you need to do when you load these cattle and, and unload them. But we've gone over picking the right animals, we've looked at the loadout facility, we've looked at the trailer, now we're going to talk about putting those animals on the trailer. One of the things when you put animals on the trailer is you'll make sure you don't overload the trailer. And, and there's two reasons for that. One is you got to make sure that you put the proper weight on the trailer that your trailer and truck can handle. Overloading can create accidents and it can can have some human safety implications. The other reason why we don't want to overload the trailer is because we don't want to wind up with, with animals getting hurt. And, and so when we have animals too tight, we can increase bruising, we can increase injuries, bumping, not intentionally, but just happens because animals are in close proximity and trying to stay up on the trailer. Another thing that's important is that we don't mix animals of small and, and bigger sizes. And one of the reasons for this is because if we have animals on the truck that are small with larger animals, they can go down underneath the larger animals and get trampled. So putting them in, sorting them before you put them on the truck, putting them in different compartments so that they stay away from each other is vitally important to the health and safety of the animals being transported. Market bulls and market cows or cull bulls and cull cows are shipped frequently. And when we load those animals, whether it's short hauls or long hauls, we want to make sure that we don't mix bulls and cows in the same uh, compartments because of riding activity that can occur. And what will happen is, is that we can have cows being hurt from riding. Bulls can also be hurt during times of riding and slipping on the trailers. When you're driving down the road and you're loaded with animals, I know this makes perfect sense to people that have done it, but we don't want to start or stop suddenly. Easing into to taking off from a stop sign or, or shutting down earlier to make sure that the animals don't lose their footing during transport is, is important. And another thing is, is making sure that you match the health and well-being of the cattle with the distance of the haul. The, the, the younger and the more uh, fit the animal is, the longer haul it can, it can uh, withstand up to a point. So the, the yearling cattle and things to that nature, all this can be judged by shrink, which is based on the amount of uh, weight loss during transport. And the last two things, understand heat stress and cold stress. Heat stress is more of an issue for cattle than cold stress is, but if we are looking at times of heat stress, we want to make sure that we keep the cattle rolling down the road, don't stop and let them overheat, and maybe we need to ship them at night. We sure appreciate you watching Doc Talk. I hope you had a great show today. And, and remember, we always recommend that you work with a local veterinarian. And if you want to find out more about what I do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from the College of Veterinary Medicine, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Doc Talk, produced in cooperation with Drovers Cattle Network and Bovine Veterinarian. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk.
Talk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection, 